Hey, my name's Jodie. I'm a fashion and beauty photographer, director and curator based in the UK. Today, I'm going to be talking to you all about finding and developing your creative identity as a photographer. So a little bit about me. I have worked on a huge variety of projects for global hotels, fashion, beauty, and alcohol brands for the last 13 years. And in that time, I've built a strong and clear identity in my style of photography. Being able to create and define your style as an image maker will not only be the most important thing you can do for yourself as an artist, but also as a commercially viable business. And if any of you are new to the industry, I will always recommend that you start here. So I'm gonna whisk you through four things that I would love for you to consider in order to better find your creative identity as a photographer. Point number one, there is value in scarcity. You may have heard many, many times that there is very little value held now in beautiful images. Beautiful pictures, do not have the same impact, or should I say, what is considered beautiful pictures, does not have the same impact as it once did. And that is because of social media. Social media has essentially made perfection and beauty look normal and the standard. So anything good won't be seen and it will become part of the ether that is the internet. So when I say scarcity, I mean, what is the one thing that nobody else can replicate? And that is you. There is only one of you and there is value in that. Your decision making, your approach, your way of communication, the way that you present your energy within a team, your fears, your desires, your experiences, they are all completely unique to you. And that is something that people are willing to pay for. Point number two, think about your personal story and who you are as a human being. So how do you create your style? What I want you to think about a little bit more is why it is you're creating images and what it is you wanna say. Brands and agencies still in this day of AI, they are still looking for authenticity and it is that interpersonal connection with an audience that sells most. So ultimately you must have something to say. When you produce a set of images and show it to the world, what you're essentially doing is holding up a set of words and saying, this is what I think, or this is how I feel. And if all you're saying is, oh, I'm jumping on this because it seems to be popular, or I like this dress, or I'm vaguely interested, then it's not going to mean anything to anyone and it's not gonna grasp anyone's imagination. So that's what I mean when you need to have something you want to say, and that will only come from within and from your story and your experiences through your own life. When we create any kind of sensory content, be it for design or for architecture or fashion in the form of stills or motion, we're expressing how we think and feel in tangible form. Before you can do this for another business or someone else's brand, you must be able to do it for yourself first and for your own brand, because we are also a brand and we must also treat it as such. Point number three, learn what came before you and know what came before you. Get your head stuck into some books, go to the library, physically flip through pages, go old school. I thoroughly recommend you go old school. We're so used to being on screens and on phones and looking for inspiration and information via Pinterest or Instagram or wherever it might be. You cannot beat the feeling of physically having a, a book and going through it and reading the words and taking your time and giving yourself that kind of deliberate separate space to take on new information. Take a good saturated look at history and all the important work of the greatest leaders and influencers in your profession and your industry whether it be food and drink or fashion or, you know, commercial or whatever, whatever side of photography you decide to, to take. It will inform your own work and make it so, so much richer. Treat it like a painter's palette. If you have all this knowledge and backstory behind you, then you can pull on all these different elements and concepts and stories and 
use that as inspiration and you can kind of mix them together and let it influence your own work and essentially enabling you to create something entirely new. Let it inspire you, let yourself fall in love. So as a fashion photographer, my personal recommendation for this sort of thing would be A History of Fashion Photography by Nancy Hall Duncan. I would also highly recommend looking at the work of Alexander McQueen, who you hopefully, regardless of your industry, will know of. I will always recommend um, looking at his book, either the VNA book or his Savage Beauty um, collection book. If you want to understand more about fashion and how fashion has influenced history, eras, define generations, why someone or something can be so iconic and the importance around that, then McQueen is a must. He is easily, arguably, the most imaginative, influential, groundbreaking artist of his time. He challenged everything and I'm hoping that he will also inspire you to question and confront the demands of fashion and fashion photography and what people think is right to see and what people expect to see. So I've got a little exercise for you just on this point. Take a look at some of the most iconic photography in history that you can, the ones that inspire you, and ask yourself, what does it make you feel in an instant? You've got one second, you, you don't get the chance to think about it. Write down one to three things that that image makes you feel. Then do this exact same thing, but with your own work or even get a friend or a creative or a collaborator to do it with you. The goal with this is to figure out, do your images evoke a strong emotion? And if they don't, why not? Why don't they? And what can you do to change that? How can you learn from what came before you to better inform creating more inspiring and communicative images with your own work? Last point, point number four. Try to discover your inspiration elsewhere. So it's perfectly natural to look at somebody else's work and want to reproduce it. I did it when I first started. All my inspiration came from uh, the books that were laid out from my mom, you know, 1970s Vogues, um, Nick Knight, Rankin, all of that. And my first instinct as a 19 year old was to look and go, I want to do that or I want to see if I can do that. And you know, that makes sense because you love it, right? So you would want to make your own version of it. I want you to try to stop following the path of another and to pave your own. That work that you love so much, it's theirs. And they do it very, very well because it's their work. Going back to point number one, you can only be a best rate version of yourself. You cannot be a second rate version of someone else. And remember, we don't have you yet. That is the power that you have and you must hold on to that. One of the most useful pieces of advice I can give you is to start thinking differently. And all these points will be really helpful for you even if you're just going through a creative block as opposed to trying to find your identity as an artist. So ultimately, we want to make our work look different. We want to walk where other people have not walked yet. So the first thing I would suggest doing is rather than looking at other photographers work and getting too drawn down those paths and using their work in your mood boards and as all your visual references, try looking more at textures, tones, color palettes, uh, visual cues, okay? Be inspired by music, research the songs, have a look at the stories of the artists that wrote those songs. Same with photographers, have a look more of their backstory, who they were as people as opposed to just the images in front of you that they created. The big one, of course, for me is read books, read novels, get yourself completely immersed in a story, a story that takes you to a completely different planet. A lot of my work is inspired first and foremost by stories. And that is the thing that allows my mind to be taken away from the influence of other people's work and into something completely new. No matter the project, be it commission or personal, I will always start here when curating the final assets. To give you a really quick example, I just recently completed a huge year and a half long project for the W Edinburgh that's just been built here in Edinburgh. And I wasn't just a photographer for that, I was also the curator as well. So it was my job to come up with the concepts for every single piece of interior artwork that we had to create. And the idea behind it is that the artwork needed to encapsulate Scotland and the essence of Scotland, but with a modern and bold approach so that it went alongside the 
style and the architecture of the building itself, which is very modern. The main thing with this is that it needed to avoid any cliché. So there's no end of clichés visually with Scotland. We've got the tartan, we've got the Highland cow, we've got the, um, the bagpipes, you know, all those things. And the tricky task that I had, of course, was to come up with completely unique visuals that nodded to it, but didn't tap into it too hard. So what I did is I took inspiration from Scotland's really rich history, the stories, the myths, the legends, the more unassuming sides of Scotland that people maybe don't know about yet. I also looked at the wildlife and of course the landscapes up here. And doing that as opposed to looking at references of other photography gave my mind complete breathing space and it totally allowed me to create something entirely new it allowed my brain to play a little bit more. It stopped me from creating constraints in my head before I even began putting the thing out there. And ultimately they got completely new and unseen bespoke visuals, which is what they wanted. Finally, don't be afraid of using words as your visual cues. So things like earthy or uh, ethereal or bright, soft, hard, things like that. Adding things like that into your mood boards and into your ideas will really help build upon that kind of idea of breaking away from things that you will have seen before, things that your team will have seen before. It's very hard once you've got loads of pictures of other people's work to get that out of your head. And it's very hard to think past all of that. So this can be really helpful for creating more of a mood in our mind. And that's really helpful for your creative team, hair, makeup, model, whoever it is that you're communicating with. You want to give your team a little bit of room to play and a little bit of room to experiment and maybe bring their own personality into things. So by giving people more abstract cues, it will keep everyone on brief, but it will also allow for a little bit of fun, a little bit of experimentation as well. So those are my four tips to help you find and develop your creative identity as a photographer. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time.